What's the word, y'all? Quick instant reactions to the Indiana Pacers moving on to the conference finals. The final score was 130-109 to in Madison Square Garden. This was one of the more improbable conference finals appearances. It's on the same level as like 20, 2021 Atlanta Hawks um, where this team... Whoa. Like, if you would ask every single NBA fan, right, going into the playoffs, before we've seen a single second of playoff basketball, which team at the bottom side of that Eastern Conference bracket had the lowest chance to make it to the Conference Finals? Remind you, that is Pacers, that is Bucks, that is 76ers, that is Knicks. Which of those four teams had the lowest chance of making it to the Conference Finals? 98.7% of fans are saying the Pacers have the lowest odds because Joel Embiid is coming back. He looks kind of good. The Knicks are the two seed. I mean, that team is really, really good. I mean, they have Damon Giannis on the, on the Milwaukee Bucks. The Pacers have made it to the Conference Finals despite the fact they probably had the lowest odds of those four. Now, granted, they did go against the Bucs without Giannis, right? There were some rumors whether or not he would be able to play. Unfortunately, he did not play. They lost uh, Damian Lillard for a, ch uh, a portion of this series. And then they go into the second round. Well, do we need to go through all the names that was missing for the Knicks slash banged up for the Knicks? Mitchell Robson out, Julius Randle out, OG Anobi had to get shot up or hoist tranquilizers or something to try to give it a going game, number seven. Uh, Jalen Brunson just broke his left hand, which sucks. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo gets hit in the ribs in the third quarter. Um, uh, Josh Hart has like flexi seal, it's like KT tape all on his ribs at the end of game six. Like that is six. Uh, Bo Bojan Bogdanovic, that is seven. That is seven of your top eight man rotation banged up slash out for this series. Now, again, I'm not taking anything away from the Pacers. At the end of the day, Pacers fans should be celebrating like they made it to the conference finals because you did. I didn't get to watch the last minute of this game because it was wrapped up and I was getting my cameras and my microphones ready. So I don't know how Tyrese Halliburton or Pascal Siakam or the rest of these guys celebrated, but they should celebrate very normally because you did something that a lot of people don't get the luxury of doing. I know a lot of great players that will never be able to or haven't sniffed a conference finals appearance. So regardless of who your opponent was and how healthy they were, you should celebrate. The next round. Now, I know, I know there's no Porzingis for at least the first couple games, but that, that Boston team is better than all of the teams you've gone through so far, and they're healthier than all the teams you've gone through so far. So it's going to be an uphill battle again. And I think all these series, I'm um, going into it at least, have been an uphill battle. Congratulations to the Pacers. We'll come back to y'all because I want to talk about this next season at large uh, because, boy, was this – the most fun Knicks season of my life. Like, I think the 2013 New York Knicks had a better regular season record by a few games or so. But this was the team that made me excited for Knicks basketball, honestly. I mean, you got to think about all the things that happened for them this season alone. You watch Jalen Brunson blossom into not just an all-star. Because last year, he didn't make an all-star appearance, but he played like an all-star. He blossomed into a superstar. Superstar. What do you have? Four straight games or dropping 40 plus points in, in the playoffs? Like that is superstar stuff. Dante DiVincenzo, a player that you signed for a mid-level exception, had a 35-point game, and tonight he almost had 40. That's that's a great story. Isaiah Hardenstein, one of the for um the forgotten about signings of the Jalen Brunson offseason, was phenomenal. I know today he didn't score and he was a minus 24, but at large. Like, there are so many good things you could take away from it. One of the biggest ones being that when OG Ananobi has played a real amount of minutes instead of the four he got tonight, the team was almost unbeatable. So it might be a bitter end, but this was such a phenomenal season and something you can really, really build on. I know that the conversations are going to be revolving around Tom Thibodeau and his rotations and how much of that had, had mattered in the, the, the fact that everybody ended up getting injured. But like the Jalen Brunson broken hand is a anomaly of a, a, a one of those freak accidents. Bogey Bogdanovich's injury. Anomaly. Freak accidents. Like there are so many things there. Um, one thing you can say is that Josh Hart has turned himself into a New York Knicks legend, no matter what the rest of his career looks like. When he goes back to the Garden, um, when he's retired and they show him on a Jumbotron, he's going to get a standing ovation. He is a Knicks favorite over the last 10 years because to have multiple games you play every single second, for you to have the first round versus the, the 76ers where you were the game-winning jump shooter in game number one or game number two, and you have four threes in both of those games, like there are a lot of great things to take away from this Knicks season that you can build on in preparation for next year. Next year, you pray that you get injury luck. I mean, this was one of the craziest injuries, like, seasons that I've seen, bro. To go into the playoffs, when you basically just like, okay, Julius Randle is out. We're fine. Julius Randle is out. We lucky kind of play good basketball without Julius Randle. Maybe we should have a conversation about that come off season. And again, to see all of these other people, Mitchell Robinson was told that he was done for the season like seven months ago and then came back and then played a few games in the playoffs and then got told again that he was out for the season. Think about that. Think about that. The Mad Madison Square Garden was bumping. I I've said this before. I'll say it again. The, the NBA is just better when the Knicks are good. It just is. Those crowds are phenomenal. 
the crazy fans for me at least are phenomenal i just enjoy every single second of this next season unfortunately it ends right here though let's circle back to the indiana pace before we get out of here because in this game specifically talking about game seven i think they went into halftime shooting over 75 percent from the field and there's nothing you can do if you're the knicks and that happens and part of that is like they just don't have the same defensive pieces like this was a bad defensive series for the knicks but also the pacers has showed us over the course of the season that they are one of the best offensive teams ever now i know some of that has changed after they got pascal siakam and they kind of shifted Shifted their gears a little bit to so going from like a bottom five defensive team to about league average and kind of balancing itself out. And with them for the majority of the season being the top offense, they ended up dropping to like top five. Ooh. There are so many times in this game alone, I'm like, nah, the Knicks don't stand a chance. That's a tough shot, mate. And there were a couple times where they just generated some such good open looks of one or two actions. And I'm just, I, I was excited for it. I mean, the, the brand of basketball they play is exciting. And you would think that some of it wouldn't translate over to the playoffs. I mean, again, we're talking about a 130 point, uh, 130 points they put up today. That translated very well. And part of it is they shot 67% from the field towards the end of the, at, at the end of the game. 54% from three, 13 made threes. I mean, it was just a phenomenal outing. And um, Tyrese Halliburton had a game. He had a game, and I, I love to see that from him specifically because the games that he had played in Madison Square Garden, the rest of the series were just bad to his standard. Um, and, and for this one to come out and have 26, 6, and 4, and a lot of that ended up happening in the first quarter when they were really setting the tone, was huge in this one. Pascal Siakam was great in this one. Um, uh, TJ McConnell has continuously gives us really, really good playoff performances. So this is such a cool story. Um, and now they got to go against the, the, the Boston Celtics, and we'll see how that goes. Um, shout out to the Knicks fans. Shout out to the Pacers fans. Everybody should walk away from this feeling relatively good about their now and in their future. Let me know what you think about this. I'll be back later today when Minnesota and Denver is over. Hopefully that game is better and closer than this one because, yeah, 21-point game. And, I, and the Knicks had that run in the third quarter. That I was like, oh, is it happening? It didn't happen. And that was it. All right, I'll see y'all.